Hi and salams everyone and welcome to a brand new vlog from here in Iraq. My name is Lima. I create content on travel, lifestyle, teaching, beauty and baking. Thank you for joining us as I travel around Iraq. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and help me get to my first 500 subscribers and for my first giveaway. Also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter and Snapchat for further details. Right, without further ado, let's get into the video, shall we? So we started our day off early in the morning at 9am where we left Garbala and headed to Najaf. This is a one hour journey, approximately 75 kilometers. Najaf is a city in the center of Iraq, about 160 kilometers or 100 miles south of the capital Baghdad. It has an estimated population of 1.2 million people. It is considered amongst the holiest sites of Shia Islam and one of the spiritual capitals. Each year, around 30 million Shias from around the world and Iraq partake in the Urbayin walk from Najaf to Karbala, which takes two days and two nights. Our first stop was the Mosque of Najaf or Masjid of Sayyidina Imam Ali, which is also known as the Grand Mosque of Kufa. It's located in Kufa, Iraq and is one of the greatest and holiest surviving mosques in the world. The mosque was built in the 7th century and was home to Sayyidina Imam Ali and contains the holy shrines of Muslim bin Gil, his companion Hadi bin Umwa and the revolutionary al muqtar This mosque has many ziyaras for us to visit. As mentioned above, it had the calm of Imam Muslim bin Aqil, Hani bin Unwa, the member where Hajar Ali al Islam was struck by a poisoned arrow, and many prophets had have arrived in this area, such as our Prophet travelled to Bayt al Muqaddis, Masjid al Aqsa from here with Hazrat Jibrail, and the maqams of such prophets, such as Hajar Nur al Islam, Hazrat Ibrahim, and al Islam, and many others. Imam Muslim bin Nakil, he was the son of Hazrat Akil ibn Ali Talib, who was the brother of Sayyidina Imam Ali, making him the cousin of Sayyidina Imam Hussein. When Sayyidina Imam Hussein was repeatedly called to Kufa by the people, it was Imam Muslim bin Akil who made the journey first in order to assess the situation there. Whilst in Kufa, he met the people and it was said that up to 18,000 had pledged allegiance to Sayyidina Imam Hussein and, it should come to, and that he should come to Kufa. After the governor applied pressure on the people and ordered the arrest of Hazrat Muslim bin Akil, he was left and he was not... Start again. After the governor applied pressure on the people and ordered the arrest of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil, who was left with not a single person by his side. Upon being arrested, he was seen weeping and was asked why. He responded, I'm not crying for myself, but I've written a letter to Sayyidina Imam Hussein telling him to come to Kufa, but he does not know that the people have broken their allegiance. I'm afraid he will be treated the same way I have been treated. He was abused and then finally executed with his body being thrown onto the street. And all his journeys and experiences with the people he did not worry about himself, but his thoughts were on the welfare of his cousin Sayyidina Imam Hussain was due to, to come to make that same journey shortly after. Hani bin Urwa, he was a leader of Kufa who hosted Imam Muslim bin Aqil, where he was sent as a messenger to by Sayyidina Imam Hussain. He was killed for his hospitality to the Ahlul Bayt by the governor Ibn Yazid. Muqtar al Takafi, he lived in Kufa and pledged that he would be responsible for avenging the death of Sayyidina Imam Hussain and the martyrs of Karbala. In some narrations, he was in prison during the time and upon release started a movement for the cause. He is reported to remove the governor of Kufa and search for the responsible for the tragedy of Ziyad, Zayn Shamar, Ahmed bin Saad, Kawala bin Yazid and many others who pl played a role in killing the grandson of the beloved Prophet Sallam. Then we travelled across the road to Sayyid Maytam al Tamar. He is known as a date seller, Al Tamar, as he used to have a shop in Kufa where he would sell dates. His life is a shining example of love and loyalty to the Ahlul Bayt, the beloved Prophet. Sallam. Living as a slave to, to a woman from the tribe of Banu Asad for, and his fate soon changed when he and his owner were met by Sayyidina Imam Ali in the bazaar. Sayyidina Imam Ali approached the lady owner and asked how much she would take in return for the slave Maytam al Tamar. During the negotiation, the lady felt that Sayyidina Imam Imam Ali was willing to pay any cost for her slave and kept raising the asking price. In the end, the agreed price was significantly higher than the normal and immediately after purchasing the slave, Sayyidina Imam Ali set him free. The freedom was repaid by Maytam al Tamar in a service to Sayyidina Imam Ali and his family and in love and devotion, he developed a close relationship with the great Imam who would often visit him at his date shop. He spent much time with Sayyidina Imam Ali and said to have been taught deep matters of religion by him. His heart had a great love and respect for Sayyidina Imam Ali and it was this love that his life was taken by brutal circumstances.
Following this, we went and visited the home of Sayyidina Imam Hussein. Near to the Great Mosque of Kufa sits the house of Sayyidina Imam Ali, where he settled after migrating from the city of Medina. This house consists of almost two rooms and a water well. The water of, which, of this well is considered to be blessed and drunk by visitors who attend. Make sure to take bottles with you and fill this up for yourself and your family because it's said to be there's said to be Shafa in the water. minute drive over to Kufa to visit the most breathtaking place I've ever seen in Iraq. I felt I was in Medina. The way the Makam is set up, I was so speechless and literally I felt like I was walking on clouds when we visited this Makam. A lot of spiritual paths travel through this blessed individual. The spiritual path that I am on, me and my husband will share more details in our upcoming video soon. Tra it travels through this blessed individual. This Makam was palace of palaces. It truly blew me away. As you look closer to the Maqam, the grandeur kept getting grandeur. This Maqam was the Maqam of Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam. At the beginning of creation, Almighty Allah chose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for the esteemed role of the leader of the prophets. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself had confirmed that in this in the saying, I was a prophet when Adam was between clay and water. Unlike the view held by popular belief, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's prophethood did not begin when he turned 40. He was a prophet before creation and the Quran mentioned the covenant in which all the prophets gave the oath to support the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, Allah Almighty also sanctioned a role that would have authority all over saints from the beginning of time until the end. Although prophethood ceased with the seal of prophets, sainthood has continued and therefore the role of the one who overlooks continues to this day. The role is aptly, aptly titled the leader of man and commonly known by the masses with the Farsi title Shahi Muradan. Shahi Muradan has been granted has been granted the authority to instruct and guide the elite of mankind, the Oliya, from all generations, including those who come at the time of previous prophets, like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who guided all the prophets before his physical emergence. Shahi Muradan has physically guided and instructed the Oliya of all Ummahs even before his physical emergence into the world. Shahi Muradan is a fountain of guidance for all those who seek nearness to their Lord and through his spirit spirituality and are inspired and guided towards him. The one who, who bears this great responsibility and trust is no, uh, none other than the great line of God, the father of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, the son-in-law and the cousin of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu the great Sahabi Sayyidina Imam Ali, may Allah ennoble his face, may Allah Jalla Jalla who sanctify his secret and guard us the love of Oliya. After Maghrib we left. I honestly did not want to leave. My heart felt it needed to be there. It was beyond emotional. Just thinking about the way we left makes me upset. We set off back to Karbala, a one hour journey home. Back in Karbala, time for dinner, some shopping and time to visit the Maqam of Hazrat Imam Hussein Radhidatan. We stayed here till it hit around midnight and sat and prayed and contemplated the events that took place throughout the day and the events of Karbala and absorbed the beauty and serenity of where we were and honestly it was emotional, spiritually uplifting and surreal is the words that come to mind when I think of Karbala now. At the beginning I was so nervous going there but now I would return with my eyes shut.
as you walk forward, you reveal what you see about you. And you pan. Right guys, that now brings me to the end of this video. I'll see you on the next vlog as we return to Baghdad. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.